What's up? We are we are live. We're, oh, we're live already. We are live. We're live. We are live. Welcome back to uh, Two Rights Make a Wrong. I almost forgot the name for a second. Two it's, Rights it's Make been a Wrong. Bit. It's been a second. That's Daniel. That's Russell. And with us we got uh, Lilo and Carl back there. Say hi, peeps. Hey. Hi, peeps. Cool. Cool. What's been going on? It's been a little while. It has been a little bit. Um, I'm going to start off by saying that um, uh, congratulations, John Boy and the rest of the USA wheelchair basketball team at the Paralympics for your three-peat and getting gold medals. I just watched it. It just ended maybe like 10 minutes ago. So congratulations. Uh, I have a friend who has two Paralympic gold medals, which is super cool. Cool. Yep. Right on. What's been going on with you? Not a whole hell of a lot. You know, same old, same old. That's good. We've got we've got some uh music news. We're gonna I would like to bring up. Okay. Is this about. like is this like music news that like I'm gonna care about? Or I is don't this fucking mu- care. Or or but is this music news that like your friends are doing and it's cool? Because your friends do music so i'm wondering yeah. if it's like that kind of news or is it like their dogs are astronauts well you would have enjoyed that right so that's what i'm asking you so it's neither oh it's neither okay cool so Continue. two days ago <laughs> lincoln park performed their first show for the first time since basically uh chester died oh and they have a new singer, and they dropped a new uh, single, and it was awesome. It was really awesome. The new singer, uh, her name is Emily Armstrong. She's from a band called Dead Sarah, and it was beautiful. It was a uh, it was a live stream concert that they did on Thursday. Okay, so they have a female singer. Yeah, they and do now. is it the main singer now? Sure, like, sure, for lack of a better term, I guess you could say. That's kind of cool. Main That's a singer. Change in directions. I kind of want to listen to that. Is it good? I thought it was great. Fantastic. I thought it was great. I thought um, she did a good job at like singing Chester's parts, and uh, like like his versions of the parts, or did they play songs that were old songs and she sang parts that Chester actually sang? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was new music, so... I well, th- they played a new song. Okay. Uh, they only have the one single out right now. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I thought it was really super cool because they played, like, three songs. And then Mike came out and he introduced the whole band. And, like, you know, he's like, hey, this is the drummer, this is the bassist, guitarist. He goes, I'm Mike. He goes, that's Emily. And tonight, replacing Chester is each and every single one of you as he's pointing to the crowd. And that just, like, that broke me. And then, like, listening to, the, like, the next couple songs, just, I, I couldn't handle myself. Like, I was crying. Aww. I was crying at work. That's so sad. Um, Yeah, it was, uh, it was really touching. Because I don't know if you know this, but Hybrid Theory, like, their first album... Like that's that's the first CD that I ever like got myself. Mm-hmm. I did know that. Yeah. So like they've been a big uh, big part of my life. So yeah. do you know do you know what the first CD you ever bought was? Like you bought yourself. Um. Or that you wanted to buy? Because I guess I didn't buy Hybrid Theory myself. I might have. I don't remember. But I know I specifically was at the store saying. Yeah, I'm going to get this. I'm pretty. I don't know what the name of it is, what the name, the title of the album was, but yeah. it was a Lone Star album. Lone Star. I thought it would have been like Mercy Me or something like that. No, because well, because I didn't get into Jesus until, um, until Washington. Yeah, and I so Mercy Me would have been after that point, and I definitely had CDs before we went to Washington. Well, so I, so I said I had CDs. No, but yeah. you did not get yourself that CD. Because you would have been nine. 
That's what I'm saying. Like, what CD would I have gotten myself at nine? That Lone Star, if that's the case. Oh, so Hybrid Theory was the first one that, that you bought I yourself. physically got myself, mm. not a CD that like, oh, Russ seemed like he was listening to that song on the radio. So for Christmas, I'm getting him this Britney Spears album. Like, there, there, I yeah, we had plenty of music. Music has always been in the house. I'm saying, what's the first album that you consciously said, I'm grabbing this CD for myself? Um, I would, it probably was, uh, Coheed and Cambria's In Keeping Secrets of Silent Earth 3. In Keeping Secrets. Hmm. Fair enough. Yep. Which, to be fair, that album came out well before I bought the album. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Then. But every CD that I ever got, because you know, when I was a kid, I hated spending money. Well, yeah, you still do. I do, still do. So if I ever wanted something, I would wait for like Easter, which that's Christmas, the biggest whatever. difference between us, right. actually. I mean, I want to say that's the biggest difference, but it's a big difference. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of yeah, it's one of our it's one of our big differences. The second you have money, you spend it. Yeah, because I live by the motto: your cash ain't worth a st- thing unless you spend it. Right, but I just want, but I want expensive things, so it takes a while to save up. Yeah, you so. still don't. You still don't. Right. Because that. so what last year, last year for Christmas, everyone pulled in to get me to give me money to buy a new set of golf clubs, which I wanted so, so bad. I still haven't spent that money on those golf clubs. I still have the money. It's not like I spent it on anything else, but the money's still just sitting there because yeah. I just hate spending money. But yeah, but I would always wait for those occasions where mom and dad would get us gifts and they'd get CDs. And video games and DVDs and stuff like that for us. So yeah, so I. But when I discovered Coheed and Cambria, what was the first thing you ever bought with your first ever paycheck? Do you remember? With my first ever paycheck, yes, like that you ever received ever. The Wii. That that was the first thing you ever bought. That was the first thing I ever. Well, that was the first thing I ever bought from a paycheck. Yeah. Where I was working a job, I bought myself Pokemon cards with allowance that we had. Yeah. But when I when I had a paycheck from McDonald's when I was working in high school and I was getting an official paycheck, paper paycheck, the first thing I bought was the first Wii the day it came out. Nice. That was what I, I saved up my money for that. My mine was Final Fantasy Seven. You did you rebuy Final Fantasy Seven? No. Because Final Fantasy Seven came out before you were working. Oh yeah. So where did you get this paycheck from that you bought Final Fantasy Seven with? My first job. All right, but we, you had Final Fantasy VII before you were working. No, I did not. You didn't? Nope. Oh, I thought you had that. I thought we had that game nope. when it was brand new. No, I borrowed it from somebody at high school. Okay. Or middle school, actually. It was, it was in sixth grade. I was in sixth grade the first time that I ever played Final Fantasy VII when somebody borrowed it to me. And it came out like two years before that? I'd have to do math. I don't know what year sixth grade was, but I, probably like a year or two before that. Because, okay. Sixth so, grade for you would have been 1999. No. Yes. I think it would have been, before, I think it was 97. Because you're two years older than me. Oh, maybe. Because 2001 was sixth grade for me. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm three years ahead of you in school. Oh, are you? Yes. Oh, because of when your birthday is. Yeah. And when my birthday is. Yeah. I got kind of screwed with when, when my birthday is. Yeah. Okay. So 1998. Maybe. Yeah. Cause so, so my first paycheck was Final Fantasy VII. My second pay and the player's guide. My second paycheck was Final Fantasy VIII and the player's guide. My third paycheck was Legend of Dragoon and the player's guide. And at that point in time... I had bought on its release date with my fourth paycheck, Final Fantasy IX, and its player's guide. All right. So, yeah, I started working when Final Fantasy IX first, started coming out, first came out. Okay. So, yeah, so I guess, but you, because you guys. We I, didn't have a lot of games growing up. We rented them always. We did. We did rent a lot of games. Yeah. We, and what, what were the games that we did have, though? All the PlayStation Magazine demo discs. Yeah, we had a lot of PlayStation. Because we have a stack like this tall yeah. of demo desk because some of those are worth some money cool i don't know where they're all at they're in my room yeah <laughs> they're in my closet 
Um, but uh, yeah, but I guess, but like my first paycheck though, right? Like that was like 10 paychecks worth for yeah. me to, before I ended up spending any money. But I guess where most of that money went, all that money all went toward my first car. So I guess, cause I bought uh, the Tornado and I paid mom and dad for that. So like dad bought it and I gave him the money cause I saved all that up. Thirty six hundred dollars that that car cost. Nice. So that was probably two years of working at McDonald's part time while I was in high school. Hmm. So yeah, that's cool. Yep. Yeah, that, those are my first paychecks and stuff like that. So that was your first job was McDonald's. That was my first W two like officially working job. I mean, I worked at Dad's factory. I worked at the powder coating shop. I worked on a farm. Before that, I picked rocks in a in a farm field, so like, like I got paid for doing things before that. But that was my first official job. What were your guys? What what was what the was first yours? thing you ever bought? What was your first job though? Your first official job? I was a dishwasher at a banquet hall. Oh, at uh, can I say it out loud? I mean, it's the I don't, I don't know why you it, have to do things like that. I just so want to make sure I'm right. It's the place in the town. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's the name of the town and yeah. Yeah, okay. Do you guys remember the first thing you guys ever bought with the first check? Or was your first paycheck? I don't. No. I'm going to be real with you. Probably drugs. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I was too young for that. Were you? I was 14. Well, when did you start uh, doing drugs? Enough. I guess that's not, that's yeah, not I too was young 16? for some people. Huh? 16? Okay. It was too young for me. So when did you start doing drugs? 17. Oh, really? That late? Mm -hmm. That's kind of surprising. All right. Cool. Yeah. That, yeah. You guys, I, it's probably one of the reasons why I turned into what I was because all of everybody around me thought I was somebody that I wasn't long before I turned into that person. I mean, I totally get, I mean, I never turned into that kind of person, but when I went to college, people thought I was just a massive drinker and a massive like dope fiend smoking like dope and all that kind of stuff but i'm just like never no, done it it's, it's not dope because yeah because the first time i ever had alcohol without mom and dad knowing about it was 11 59 before my 21st birthday and yeah. then i called mom i'm like i'm so sorry and she's like cool do something you'll regret yeah and you came down for that so that was fun mm -hmm. but yeah uh but everyone thought i was gonna be like I this massive hammered <laughs> you did <laughs> Um, and you started walking around town. Yeah, and I'm just like, like the best thing to do when you're drunk. No, is to walk but and then I'm the sitting here. I'm just like, I'm over this. I'm done walking because I hate walking. So I'm just like, I'm done walking. So I just sat down and waited for you at like a stop sign because I'm like, I hate walking. It's the best thing to do. No, it's to walk. You around had to go buy yourself. You had to go find yourself a convenience store that was open to buy yourself cigarettes. I think. Oh, probably. Yeah. And we, the, see, well, that's the problem. You should have known where that was because you lived in that town. But nothing. It was like it was like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I'm pretty sure nothing is going to be open at two o'clock. It's a college in the town. There should have been so many things open. I mean, there's things open to yeah. get like, but like, but like toppers and McDonald's, not uh, gas stations. Yeah, they're all open. Um, but I do remember though because we did a disc for the initiation of the ultimate team. They do this thing called doing a disc, and you take an ultimate disc and you fill it with beer. Guess how many twelve ounce cans of soda. Or of, of beer fit. Well, you just you just lied to us. We know you're drinking soda now. Well, no, it was beer. You faked it. Well, because no, because I okay. So you're just drinking no, 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 ale. no, no. There, there's you're a like, point. Yeah, it's beer. There's a point to my story with the saying soda. But guess how many twelve ounce cans fit into a disc? Like sixteen. It's way okay. How many do you think, Carl? Five. Five. Oh, that's actually a pretty good guess. Lilo, how many do you think fit into an ultimate disc? I have no idea. It's like six and a half. You don't, oh. you don't even. You don't so, even, but everyone's was, like, everyone's I knew like, I was low. Everyone, I knew it was not less than five. Everyone's like two or or, or maybe three. And when I say six and a half, they're like, there's no way. I had like, to do no. math in my head quick. It really so, does. Those so, without you being weirded out and going to run and get head. things, what's the main difference between a regular ass frisbee? and like an ultimate disc 
So an ultimate disc has a specific curve to the edges of it, and it also has a very specific diameter where Frisbees branded by Whammo can be any size. But an ultimate disc is also 175 grams, and it is consistently weighted amongst the entire thing for a perfect like spin. Whereas like Whammo, when they make things, they'll even make 175 grams, but the plastic isn't perfectly weighted. So you could have a heavier pocket of plastic on one side than the other side, so it wobbles. Gotcha. So that's the difference between an actual ultimate disc. Um, but everyone thought that I was going to crush the record. And because they thought this, I'm like, I have to crush the record. I have to beat the record, and which was like 18 seconds for doing, which is like six and a half cans of beer. But then the thing is, if you stop, they can stall count you, which is like a thing in the sport. And if they stall count you, they get to fill it back up. And so I practiced with water. And I'm like, dude, like nine seconds down that thing in like nine seconds. I can, I can do this. But I'm like, but beer has fizz to it. So I'm going to practice. So I'm going to do it with soda. It was a little bit harder with soda. And I did it in like 13 and a half seconds with soda. So I'm like, okay. And I did it like three times. I'm like, I can do this. I'm going to crush the record. Because again, no experience with, with alcohol. Okay. I think we need him to start proving this right now. Text, text Jenna. What is she going to know about it? Tell her to bring down an ultimate and six beers. An ultimate disc and six and a half beers. No, no. Uh, We're doing this right now. No, 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 no. You're yes, not yes, listening yes, to yes, the yes. story, but let me finish oh. the story. So then I get to the event where they're going to do my initiation. And I get like four gulps into the beer. And I'm like, <laughs> and I just throw up all over the place. Well, okay. so Because beer is different than soda. For those of you who don't know. So take out that entire part that I just said. All right, this is your chance for redemption. Text Jenna, tell her to bring down an ultimate disc and six and a half beers. We're going to make you redeem yourself. I'm not sure if I could do it even now. I mean, I'm really good at shotgunning a single beer. I've never been beaten, but I don't know if I could do six and a half. That would be six a lot. Six beers is a lot. It is. But, uh, but they ended up just because they kept filling it back up because I was terrible at it. So then they ended up just being like, okay, so that was my drink for the night. I walked around the party just all night long, just sipping a little bit at a time out of this disc. <laughs> Cause I couldn't, then, I couldn't do it. It's just a referee watching you this entire time. Every time you stop drinking, you're just filling it back up. No, they stopped filling it back up because I just couldn't do it. They ran out of beer. So, but I, but I did, I did hit a record. The longest, the, the longest time. time it took to do a disc. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds about right. Yeah. So that was that was fun. If someone told me that I was going to drink six and a half beers in one gulp, I would tell them to shut the fuck up because <laughs> it's just not happening. Yeah. That's that's a lot. That's like eating six sandwiches. Yeah. Drinking why, six sandwiches. That's why I don't I like enjoying some of my things, you know. Uh I don't really want to chug or anything like that. That's why I don't really get competitive eating. But speaking of competitive eating, man, did you see did you see what happened? I mean, the last thing I heard was that what's his face was disqualified from participating in the big event Co- for who? some reason. Kobayashi? No, no, the Joey white American chestnut? guy. Yeah, Chestnut. Well, he won. Well, not the one. Not event. at that. There was some event he wasn't allowed to participate about. in, oh. and I don't know why. Oh. Uh, because they wouldn't let him use his brand of hot dogs, and he sponsored. Oh, because it was a Nathan's hot dog e- eating competition, and he's sponsored by someone else, and he yeah. wanted to use those. Yeah, okay. This is the Netflix thing that happened like a week ago. I mean, this was like two months ago, but no. What, what so this was you? a thing. Uh, yeah, co- they did a live Netflix event <laughs> of Kobayashi versus Joey Chestnut. Okay, and you know, obviously, in the world of competitive eating, those two are the biggest rivals that ever existed. That's like Hashirama and Madara type rivalry. Totally. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Joey Chestnut won, apparently. By how many? I don't know what the exact number was. Here, can we look that up, somebody? How many how, how many hot dogs did Joey Chestnut throw down his gullet? Eighty three. He won by eighty three. I he, thought it was eighty six. So he, that's what this thing is saying. I don't know if it's true. It's the internet. It, but it says he ate 83 hot dogs. Okay, well, then how... But what did he win by? That's what I... What Kobayashi eat. Like, was it close or was it, like, drastically off? 
I hope it was like he had like 82. Yeah, right. I want it to be close. Yeah. Man, I can you believe can you imagine the bowel movements that they have after that? No, I I would imagine they just go and throw up. Well, I don't know if Joey or Kobayashi can. Does he not have a mouth? Well, like so this is actually and I don't know how many other people do it, but there's a thing called the Kobayashi shake. And when Kobayashi eats, what he does is he does this weird thing where he like does like this does like this weird shake with his stomach and what he's technically doing is he's bypassing his stomach. As far as I remember, he's basically taking the hot dogs, shaking and shaking them past his stomach into his his lower digestive system. So there's nothing in his stomach to tell him he feels full. Yeah, so he could be just like shitting hot dog. A full hot dog. Just a full hot dog okay. shooting out. I All think right. he ate 67. 67? That's, okay, now that's disappointing. Joe, that is Joey a, Chestnut decimated If him. that is actually true, that is a huge disappointment, and they shouldn't even have done a Netflix special on yeah, that. Yeah, that well, was a lot for Joey them. Chestnut set a new world record, by the way. Oh, okay. with 83? Yeah. What was 83 the previous with, world record? Hmm? What was the previous world record? Oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's like the most recent stuff of media that I can, I can think of. It looks like it was 76. 76. Oh, so that's was a also Joey jump Chestnut. Oh, was, he broke so his was, own world record. Broke his yeah. own world record. Sweet. Yeah, that's good. I feel like he's going to stop now. And so it, I doubt it. Uh, is, and is Kobe Yashi, that's his name? Is, is he Japanese? I believe so. Okay. So then that segues into my next thing. <laughs> Okay. It's American versus Japanese. Okay. Did you know that Power Rangers wasn't an original okay. thing? Okay. What? I've known about this for 25 years. I can't believe the current resurgence of people not knowing this, and it blows my mind. Why? It actually blows my mind. Why, wouldn't, why would we have known about it 25 years ago? I don't know. I don't know, but I figured people knew about this already. No, I don't know. Do but, you guys know what he's referencing? Do you know what I'm referencing? So what the fuck you guys are talking about. So okay. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and most subsequent Power Ranger shows is actually a show called Super Sentai, and it's Japanese. And here's the fucked up part of it: they replace the Japanese actors, but only when they're out of the suit. Mm-hmm. So all of the suited up Rangers are still the original Japanese actors, Rita Repulsa, all the bad guys, all the people in the costumes are Japanese. They just cut out all of the scenes. And there's, uh, if I remember correctly, there's only two of the Power Rangers series that coincides directly with the Super Sentai um, storylines. Otherwise, they are not even the same storyline. They don't have the same lore. They don't have the same mm-hmm. powers. They don't have the same anything. It is completely different. Yes, I do know this. I'm a huge Power Ranger person. I mean, but I feel like people can be a huge Power Ranger person and still not know about it. Um, but so then what I want to know, though, is my question about it is that is all of the things that they've done after that because power rangers became really popular in america Mm -hmm. so then did all of the stuff after that like even the ones that they have like the space force ones whatever were those still super sentai yes or were those yes their own original is there anything that's original power rangers i think like i said i think there's two oh i I think there's like all of like almost all of them so then what i need to know though is the movie is the movie the original, uh, that's, the first one. As far as I know, the movie is American. All American. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. There is actually a really recent crossover with Godzilla and the Power Rangers. Oh. Godzilla versus Power Rangers. Right. Godzilla destroyed them. Cool. Yeah, it was awesome. So yeah, so I just found out about that. Yeah, I thought that was cool. yeah, that's actually uh, yeah, I've actually seen that been going around a lot lately, and yeah, I, I it's kind of weird 
that it's um people like don't know that in my in my brain it's weird just because you did know yeah but there's so many people who are like i because i looked at the comments then and so many because i'm like is this true or are people just pulling your like because i could totally see this come out and like it's something that people are just pulling your legs to make you believe it but then i looked at the comments and yeah it was true and but then there's people who are like i don't know what kind of stupid retarded like nine-year-old you were to not realize that it was i'm like you're nine. You're a normal nine year old to fact, not realize. That. I could be wrong about this, but I think I'm not. I think the original, like the original Mighty Morphin mm-hmm. Power Rangers, the Yellow Ranger, that's male. Oh, that's a it? dude. No, it has boobs in, in the, the Japanese. It has boobs though in the costume. I don't know if he does. If she does. Oh, if she it does. does. Yeah, she does. Because Kimberly has a skirt. Okay. Kimberly's Pink Ranger has a skirt and the yellow ranger does not have a skirt in the original i'm not sure if kimberly had a skirt in the original kimberly has a skirt she has like a weird skirt thing she does have a skirt thing like i watch this stuff like fairly regularly recently yes was the super sentai yellow ranger. go ranger i think you'd have to type in like I think it's Go Ranger, all one word. Go Go Ranger, maybe. That's uh, the original Mighty Morphin. And in fact, here's oh, a it was a male. Kid. The yellow, the yeah. yellow was Super Sentai was male. Look at yeah, that. that's what I thought. So what's also funny about that is, um, wait, then I have a question. Was the Black Ranger black? Not nah, no, he was Japanese. Okay, <laughs> just just so you just so we wanna, I'll be out there. So I guess, you know, they were all yellow. <laughs> um this is what I was talking about, Russ. Well, the, the Yellow right Ranger here. was Asian in American. Right. They made they made the Yellow Ranger Asian. They no, made them no, coincide. No, I get that. Which I think the American this thing, is just that's what racist. I was talking about in the car on the way here. <laughs> Were you talking about on the way here? <laughs> Nothing. Anyway. But I think that's racist to make the anyway, Asian line. That's so, what I was talking about. Okay. So so what's so what's funny <laughs> about this um is that I think the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was one of the first Super Sentai that actually used the robots and the giant zords. Okay. Otherwise, before that, I think Mighty Morphin and the Gow Rangers <coughs> is like maybe the 13th or like the 20th Super Sentai iteration. It existed for like 30 years before it came. Oh, it was to 19, America. like 71, I think it was. Yeah, so it came. It came. Uh, it came quite a few. It was around for quite a few years before it came to America. And Mighty Morphin was the first one that came to America. So, you know, I. But so from what I heard, though, based. Oh, this was based on people talking in the comments. Was that the um, the Mighty Morphin used the suited up. From the original 1971 series. No. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. That's because that's what people were saying. Like, I don't know how you couldn't tell between the video quality from 1990 all the way jumping back to 1971. The video quality is so different. So that's what they were saying and like why they thought they were so smart as nine-year-olds. Because No, I mean, America likes to do that to Japanese things in general, like that MXC. Yeah, MXC was such a good show, but that was like completely like fakely dubbed. <laughs> yeah, well, it was fakely. Well, I mean, so was Power Rangers. Well, right. Yeah, but like they do that. They just they just do that in a thing because like MXC, um, that was called uh, Takeshi's Castle. That was originally called Takeshi's Castle, mm-hmm. which only one person ever won. Um. Uh, Ghost Stories. There's an anime, notorious yeah, we talked anime, about, we talked about ghost stories. On the last episode. Yeah, America just likes to ruin Japanese things yep. and all Asian things, I guess. We can't let like, them have nice things. Like cities. That was a reference to World War Two. Yeah, no, I yep. I yeah. wasn't sure if you really wanted to go yeah. if you went there. I did. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> that's it reminds me of a joke where it's like uh all these countries are breaking the like their record for like the hottest day of the year and japan will never beat that that was poorly executed it was i'm gonna i'm gonna throw that out there it wasn't the greatest but speaking of japan too so the olympics just happened yeah 
And there was this meme going around the internet. I'm not sure if you saw it, but one of the coaches for, I can't remember which team it was. It was Japan. It was a Japanese team. Japan. Yeah, it was Japan. It was one of their teams. I can't remember what sport it was for, but the coach, they showed him on TV all the time and his name was Light Yagami. Mm-hmm. So it was just that like, oh man, all the other like Olympic teams are screwed. So that was pretty, that was pretty funny. Well, how was it spelt? I feel like that'd be very specific. It was spelt. I believe it was spelled L I G H T Y A G A M I. That's not what I mean, but okay. Well, well, cause light, like that's all spelt in kanji. Like when they write their name, they would write it in kanji. Right. They had the spe- they- and it's spelt very specifically. And if I remember correctly, light talks about how the kanji for his name is specifically points out that it's moonlight. Okay. Right? So. I don't think it's ever mentioned in the English version. It, right. Me. So, yeah. Right. Because, like, some of that is, like, mis- misinterpreted in English. Mm-hmm. We don't have specific things like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Speaking of other Japanese things, I've just finished uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Okay. Um. Yeah, that it's very confusing. I have no idea what's happening. I have no idea what's happening in this game. That's good. So it's like so the departure of storyline from the original Final Fantasy Seven. It's like at this point, it's not even the, remotely the same game anymore. Yes and no. Oh, okay, cool. It's, I love it when you answer like it that. It is literally no, no, no. <laughs> it is literally simultaneously exactly the same and exactly different. Okay. It's it's really really weird. We don't know what's happening. It's clearly like a multiverse thing, where we're seeing two or three different stories all at the same time, and they're converging. All right. Um. That's what the reunion is in this game, instead of the original one. All right. Um. I don't know how I feel about it. I it, the game's really good to play. The battle's really fun. Storylines pretty cool until the end um other than that i have to say and i felt this way with the first final fantasy 7 remake the game's so fucking slow everything in the game is so fucking slow anytime you have to like do a button prompt to do anything it just takes cloud forever in a day to open up a chest and or sit down or bend underneath something and it just everything is so fucking slow so that's my that's my opinion on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. All right, cool. Carl, I have a question for you, though. How do you feel about this whole new CT scanning of Pokemon cards? What do you mean? Have you not heard of this? Yeah, I don't think anybody knows. Well, it depends about. on what you mean. So sealed packages of Pokemon cards, people are scanning oh. them with CT machines to know if what cards are You know how expensive those CT machines are? I mean, it costs like 60 bucks to have a package scanned. Oh, people are just sending them in. Yeah, it's a business oh. now. It's an actual business that people are sending in their in their cards so to people who have them. They're sending in a pack that cost. Well, it, it only this only makes sense to do on packs that are, let's say, older than two thousand four. Right, it's old packages. It's old. It's collectible pack packs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess you could do it if you're looking for you know packs that are a few years old but they there's a potential of having you know a 600 hundred dollar card in it um but yeah but people yeah, but are the amount of packs that you would have to send in to get it like doesn't make sense to me I, yeah i know but yeah but they're sending it in. what you're going to send a pack in for 60 bucks be like oh it doesn't have this in it and then you're going to sell that pack for like five bucks still sealed it's, what do you mean well you're not going to open it if you're going to send it in and you find out that it has garbage in it you're not going to open it the new ones or even the old ones. Maybe the old ones, but then, but you don't need to tell anyone. Yeah. yeah see, so you're just going to resell it. You're going to resell the pack. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, now yeah. that's a problem, though, because now you're lying to somebody. No, you're not lying. You're just not telling them. Yeah. You're just, I have a pack from this age. And it's, it's not like. 
But the thing is, is the reason a pack from that age is worth that much is because it has the potential to have something in it. And well, if you, you yes, know for a fact yes that it doesn't no. have something in it, then it's not worth that much. I mean, no, that's not that's not entirely true. It is entirely it's true. It's not People entirely sell heavy true. packs still. Because, People weigh and sell heavy packs. Yeah, because but that's not that's not entirely true because just the fact that you have something that's that is that old and it's sealed in and of itself has value to it. It's kind of like having a video game that is still sealed. You, it, there's nothing special inside of that box, but you have a sealed box of, yeah. of Super Smash Brothers from But yeah, but if, back if I had a sealed box of Super Smash Brothers, but somebody CT scanned it and it's not Super Smash Brothers and it's fucking Manda 96 that somehow got inside that box, that fucking box is worthless. Well, correct, but you're completely missing the, the, the point. But I'm not. Well, you are. That, that's the value of these packs. Now, yeah, granted, the pack might have a certain collector's value right. to it, exactly. but it does not have the price that people are selling that pack for because the price that the people are selling that pack for is the chance to pull a good card. Mm. It is the chance to pull that Charizard. It, sort of, because plenty of people buy these vintage packs and still don't open them. Right, because there's the chance. Because if you do open it and you don't have that Charizard, now it's worthless and you wasted your money. Because people have graded packs, and they're, so they're sealed. So that even if you sell it, there's, there's really no way of opening it. Again, because there's the chance. I mean, I, But if you take away the chance... I think there's then, okay. If you take away the chance and you're selling it on eBay, going, "Hey, this has nothing in it. I CT scanned it. Here they are. It originally cost five bucks, but I'm selling it for twenty because it's a vintage one. I respect that. Okay. But if I said, "Hey, I bought this for a hundred dollars because there's a chance that this OG Charizard's in it. I CT scanned it, found nothing in it. I'm gonna turn around and sell it for another hundred dollars. No, that's that's not correct. Mm. That's not correct right there. It depends. I think you're putting a little bit too much weight in the chance of having something. But I'm not. Building the value. No, I think I think part of it is that the value is is that it's that old and it's sealed and everything is I don't perfect. I don't think that's the I don't think that's the case with Pokemon cards. The, they they are that expensive because it's the chance of having something great in it. Mm. I'm not sure. How do you feel? Do you think that what he's saying is accurate or do you think it's just kind of the value is there because it's an old pack that the rarity of it being opened is what builds the majority of its value? No, the value is definitely for the cards. Um, but the thing is that people have been getting scammed for Pokemon cards since Pokemon's been out. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. But now I'm, the scammers are just paying 60. Now the scammers are just scamming themselves. They're scamming themselves before they scam other people. Because $60 to scan a pack is just stupid. Yeah. They're stupid. Yeah, but but it's a horrible thing. But uh, they're saying that it's like it's ruining the collectability because now like you do know and there's not this chance anymore right. so maybe but who wh why spend 60 dollars to do that i don't understand that's such a waste of money because they can see if they have something and then if they don't they can just sell it as a sealed pack yeah but they're still losing money they have to find the they still have to get lucky enough to find the pack with the card right but but if they buy if they scammers buy pack, are going to make more money by resealing packs than they are doing this well what i'm well but you can also there are ways to tell if it's been resealed. So if you know what you're looking for, you can tell if it's a resealed pack or not, so you don't buy it. But as far as the as far as the CT scanning go, the I mean these original packs, these original packs are like five hundred plus dollars. I've seen some of them go for like eight hundred dollars. So yeah, they're it. they're not cheap. So if you buy one for let's say let's say you buy bulk, right? You buy bulk or if you buy a box because they're still sealed boxes. Mm -hmm. That have like what sixty packs, and I don't know how many packs are in a box. So they have a it's ton of twenty eight or thirty six. But then they buy those for like two thousand dollars, which is a great deal. But a sealed box of packs is about two thousand dollars, twenty three hundred dollars. I've seen them. So then you're getting a great deal, and if you scan all of them at sixty dollars a piece, you're at however many. But then you can sell each of them individually, except for maybe one that might have a Charizard in it. But you sell them all individually for eight hundred bucks. You're making a lot of money. 
Yeah. But also, well, also if you have them scanned bulk, you get cheaper prices for having them scanned bulk. So, but that's also a scam. That's still a scam. Don't I mean, buy from resellers. Uh-huh. It should just should it. Well, you can only buy them from resellers. You, there's no way to buy an original pack from a non-reseller. Only buy a sealed product. Then don't buy packs. Just don't do it. It's, okay. You're always running the risk. You've always been running the risk. No, I completely There's agree a lot with of you. websites, even in eBay, where if you buy something and it's a scam, you're still not going to get your money back. No, I completely agree with you. I'm just asking you how you feel about the CT scanning as far as the collectability, because you're a collector. I think it's I think it's dumb that people are spending money on that. Okay. And if you're going to spend the money to buy your own so that you don't have to pay for each individual pack, sure. It might be a good business, but if you're going to pay sixty dollars for each pack, you're probably just then, an idiot. So then, I guess how do you? But I guess another thing though is that there's people who have the CT machines are buying up a ton of cards. Yeah, and those the, people are packs, probably smarter. But then, but then they can scan themselves, and it's free for them to scan it because it's yep. their own thing. But then they can sell a pack saying that like, here's a pack with a Blastoise in it. Give yep. me four thousand dollars for it, whatever. I don't know how much a Blastoise is worth, but so now, but now do you think that is ruining it or do you think good for them for scanning the thing and they're selling a guaranteed pack with a Blastoise in it? Yeah, I guess my thing is I don't really care. I So there's been bigger things that have ruined Pokemon, like the entire company that stole pretty much like 90% of the full art from, oh, what set was it? Oh, I want to say it was Evolving Skies. Right. It's one of the printing companies. Somebody just stole like 90% of the full art hollows. And they got caught because they were selling them at like one of those like flea market type places. Mm. They had like a stack of like rainbow rare cards this high. And it was just an unbelievable sight. Oh. So people found out and yeah, they got in trouble. Right. Makes sense. So people have been ruining Pokemon for a long time. Oh, yeah. Are those like big boxes with like the eight individual, like the eight packs and like the big card and like some of the coins? Are those worth buying for like fifty bucks? Do they go up in value? Do those if you keep those boxes sealed? Yeah, they all go up in value. Do they? Yeah, everything goes up in value. How long do you have to wait? Like if I buy a brand new, like the the newest version, like the Paladine Sky or whatever it's called. If I buy that, how long will it be before that thing goes up in value? It completely depends on things like pull rates. Okay. Like, um, which one was it? Uh, the, the one I was just talking about evolving sky because it has, um, uh, a card that they've been calling Moonbrian. Okay. It has gone up. Oh, it's Umbrian on the moon. Yeah. Yeah. It has gone up significantly faster than all of the other sets around it. So mm-hmm. like, uh. I'd want to say one of those boxes that you're talking about for 50 bucks. I want to say for Evolving Skies, they're about 150 right now. Okay, cool. But all the other ones around them are the same price that you bought them for. Okay, because I was at like Target uh, the other day and they had... Fusion Fist. That's still probably like 50 bucks. Okay, because I was at Target the other day and they had stacks upon stacks of them. And I'm shocked because I've never seen a shelf with that many Pokemon cards still on the shelf. Cause oh yeah, they've been go- printing more and more. Okay. That's a lot of the reason why the value of Pokemon cards have kind of stagnated because they've been just printing them to hell. Oh, okay. Because so the main problem of... was that before the craze, they kind of had a much more limited stock and they didn't have as many printing whatever. I don't know if they got more warehouses to print cards or if they've just been filling more hours. I'm not sure, but they've been printing more for sure. Yeah, see, and that's what I would do, though. Like, if I was a company, right, like Pokemon, who makes the cards, like, they could care less about the collectability of this stuff, right? Oh, yeah. No, they don't care. Because that's all secondhand sales. So to for them to make money, yeah, print more. They'll make more money because people just buy the, the new stuff up and they'll make all that money. Yeah, they just have to make sure that they don't overprint to the point where... Where people don't care to buy it because the, the value is gone. Well, the businesses, they don't even care about the people buying it. They only care about if the businesses keep buying it. So speaking of Pokemon here. Yeah. Do you know the dates that Pokemon was released? I was going to wait till till the uh, the next time you came up to do this. Be more specific, Russ. I'm not going to be, Carl. Just let me finish. 
Um, do you know the dates? This is 1996. Mm. No. I thought that was the year. I don't. Yeah. So, so it was February 27th in 1996. So it was 1996. Okay, cool. Then you know when it came to America? 1997. No. The day you turned nine. The day I turned nine? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Pokemon came to America on your birthday. When I turned nine. Mm-hmm. So you just told everyone when my birthday is? Yep. They can just Google that. Yep. <laughs> yep. They have the year I was born. They have they have everything. Yeah. That's Social cool. security number is 296-45-6262. Four. Was, I don't even think there was a single number in there that's in my social security number. <laughs> I, I'm, that's good. Then I yeah. made that entirely up. So, uh, cool. So I'm glad uh, none of it was correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna do. That's why I, kept, I was. You're not sure if you were gonna come up on your birthday, so I guess I'm not gonna bank on the fact that you're gonna be here on your birthday to to share that fact that's cool that's a cool fact so i'm yeah. special yeah my birthday is also the same as hillary duff's you, really yep that's fun do you know who i share my birthday with a lot of i actually have been finding i've been meeting a lot of people out that have the same birthday as you this is, this is so this might go into our next segment one piece i do <laughs> share my birthday with ichiro oda the author of one piece oh that's cool. I'm so proud of you. Is that why you like it so much? That is not why I like it so much. Okay, so but I'll, it makes I'll, sense. I'll scroll down to my One Piece section here. So to, have you have you have you been keeping up with? Uh, you haven't been keeping up, but have you watched more One Piece? I've watched more One Piece since the last time we've talked about it on a podcast. Okay, and how much more? How far are you now? Uh, the Giants, Little Garden. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you like the Giants and Little Garden? It's all right. You should watch something else. Is it supposed to be that good? Yeah. So, but no, but I do have a question for you, and I want to know. Mm-hmm. And Laboon the whale. Mm-hmm. That was probably like probably the closest connection that I've ever had to the show. Okay, it'll and, get deeper later on, but okay. And so, because does Laboon come back? Uh, does Luffy see L- Laboon again? L- Luffy and his crew have technically not seen Laboon again. Okay, they will though. How do you know they will? It's I you'd we you will have to keep watching to find that out. Okay. So you don't even know if they will. Oh, we if they don't. It will be one of the biggest disappointments that One Piece could do. Because like I'm like because like Laboon, like you could say that they're on their way to a point, whatever. There could be some sort of thing that says they're gonna see each other, but there could be some sort of death that ha- like Laboon could die. Yeah. So you don't know. I don't think Laboon's gonna die. Okay. He's been fighting a mountain for he has 40, been fighting a mountain for forty years. I don't think he's going to die. But there's people out there who are trying to kill him. Well, or does, just, does that just kind of go away? They just need food, and and obviously they've never succeeded. Okay. Um. Yeah, because my thing is, is that they tell this whole like heartbreaking story about Laboon's like first people, yeah, and how they never come back and yep. never see him again. Yep. And then Luffy promises that he'll come back and see him. Yep. So I'm just like, if Luffy doesn't come back and see him, like at this point. Like, because I'm, what, episode 62 or something like that? Mm-hmm. So from episode 62 to 1,000 and, like, 180, the fact that they haven't seen Laboon again, I'm do, sitting do here you like, want the no, brief spoiler? they're jerks. Do you want the brief spoiler? And it, because, especially since there's a time jump. Do you want the brief spoiler? Sure. They meet somebody who was part of that crew. Yeah, oh, okay. And he's yeah. been trying to get back to Laboon this entire time, and that person is part of the Straw Hat Pirates. Okay. So. They will. Is that why he joins the Straw Hat Pirates to get back to Laboon? No. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. No. That he at joins this point, the pirates and then finds out the connection. Because how how many years is the time jump? Two. Two years, and then how many years is like just the whole thing? Like, or um, so between the time of episode one and the time skip, it was probably six months. Okay. And between when they get back from the time skip to where I am now, it's probably been like. 
four months, maybe another, maybe like somewhere between four to six months. Okay. So a total of three years from start of the show to where they are right now. They're probably somewhere in there. And I'm just saying that like Laboon still wait, like two more years has gone by and Laboon hasn't seen anyone who's promised to see him. Yep. Well, it's very, very difficult to get out of the grand line. I understand. I understand how that all works. I um, mean, he has to, they have to go across the entire world I, I, to get out. Yeah, I get it. Well, they don't have to. They just can't navigate. Right? They could, if they figured out a way to, they could go back the opposite direction and try to get out the same way they did. They just don't have a way to navigate that way. Well, they, no, like, actually, it's the exact opposite. They can navigate out. They know what direction is out, but they cannot physically get out of the Grand Line. No, then I haven't learned that yet. All yeah, I've learned get, is the little bubble things that point in the direction of where you yeah, need to go. So, so, so the world is split up in half, basically, by a giant landmass. Land yep. That is called the red line. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then basically perpendicular to it is called the grand line. Mm -hmm. And on both sides of the grand line is miles of water that's called the calm belt. There's no current and there's, there's no, no wind, wind and it's infested with sea kings. Okay. Which are the giant so it, dragon things. Yeah. A, sh a ship cannot go past that. Well, it could. Well, there's no engines. There's no wind. They have, they have paddles. Pirate ships had paddles. That's a huge ship, and yeah. they would be attacked by the sea kings. Well, the Going Mary's not that big. It, and it would have been destroyed by sea kings. I mean, it's their Luffy breeding can ground. find a way. So you have to go all the way around. Okay. Um, so then my other question is, is the Going Mary, mm -hmm. does, it get, does he replace it and does it get bigger, and, but it's still called the Going Mary? Because no. I think on like the first episode or something like that, he had this tiny little ship that had like that llama head on it. But then he ends up with like a bigger ship um, with the he, llama head on it. Well, I don't think that that thing shouldn't have had a llama head on it. and It was just a little dinghy. I think it had a llama head on it, though. Did it, Carl? Did, no. Before they got the Going Mary... They didn't have a boat with a llama head on it at all. No, because that dude's name was Mary. That he designed that. Oh, I thought I thought he had it a was little, just a little boat. boat. I thought he had just, a little boat that had. No, a I think llama you might. If you've seen pictures, I think there's like covers to the volumes where he's in a little dinghy that has that. Okay. I could have sworn I've seen it. And it comes up a little bit later. Okay, but yeah, it. Yeah. No, they do not get a bigger ship. That's called the Going Mary. Okay. Sounds good. I will say that. Um, you're getting there. I uh, convinced a kid at work like two weeks ago to start watching One Piece as well. Mm. He is further than you are. Okay. And then there's, uh, because we talk about all the cross voices for English actors and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, Nel Heppo. Hell Meppo. Is that his name, Nel Heppo? Hell Meppo? Hell Meppo. Yep. Okay. Hell Meppo. Mm -hmm. Is that Master Roshi? In English? Yeah. I have no idea. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> Why are you asking us the English voices? We know that you know we don't know this. Because I just figured you just know the information because you love it so much, so you know all the people who have ever been in it. That's just yeah. I just figured you'd l want to know the information. I don't I don't know that. Because it, it's like because it's like Master Roshi. It sounds just like Master Roshi, except for a child and a stupid and a stupid kid. Yeah, Hell Meppo sucks. He is a stupid kid. But yet, and he's like young. He's like whatever his kids. Uh, uh, what's his name? Kobe. Kobe. Yeah, he's it's a like couple Kobe. Years older than Kobe, I think. Yeah, yeah. but it's but the voice is like Master Roshi. So just you're imagining this like old flipping turtle dude, and then all of a sudden, it's I don't know. It could be that actually be kids. interesting. Yeah. You want to try to see if you can find that quick? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Because I, um, they're kind of like I'm like, is that seriously Master Roshi? That sounds terrible. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a little something two that happens a little bit later on and i want if you keep watching which at this point i don't even know if you should like wait in the comments if i don't like the show at this point i feel like i keep watching i feel like you not only do you just not like it but you're also just 
intentionally being reluctant about it. I'm really not. But um, I'm really not at all. But there is there is a point in time later on in the series where there is a group of people that are pretending to be the Straw Hats. And one of the fun things they do in, in the Japanese version, at least. Yes. It is Master Roshi. Mike McFarlane. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Yes, it is Mas- Mr. Roshi. That's... Um, also, your Ro- Yajirobi. Yeah, that I And know. Buggy. Oh, he's Buggy. Apparently, he really? he's also Buggy. Oh, wow. So he's Buggy. So, so he can really change his voice. Um, so, there, uh, so, so there's a group of people that pretend to be the Straw Hats. Okay. And all of the voice actors in the Japanese version, they pretend to be somebody else. Okay. So like Sanji will, was pretending to be Zoro, and Zoro was pretending to be somebody else. So then is like is Nami and the only the only two I can think would switch up with Nami would be Luffy and Nami switch. That's well, the only way I could see that happening. They do get another female. Oh, they do. Okay, yeah, I'll say that much. Well, there's four. Well, because but, yeah, is Luffy a Luffy oh is Luffy a is female, yeah. yeah. Which I don't know if I ever told you that Chopper is Pikachu. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't know Chopper, so never mind. You did tell me that someone's Pikachu, though. Yeah, somebody. Well, even if uh, the English one's de- going to be different too. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. No, it's just it's just kind of I don't know. It's I just think that might be Happy from Fairy Tale. That could be. I don't know about that one though. But if you just think about all the animes that I do like, I like more serious animes. Dragon Ball Z is the goofiest anime that I like. And and. One Piece is significantly goofier and just kind of yeah. I would say One Piece is on par with the goofiness that like Avatar has, though. No, completely different. Completely different. Okay. And also, Avatar is one of the greatest like written shows ever. You can't even compare the two. You're right. I cannot compare the greatest piece of longest literature, one of the longest piece of literature that ever existed with over 100 volumes, one over 100 or 1,100 uh, things that's posted in walls and museums. You're right. I can't compare that yeah. to Avatar. The Last Airbender. Yeah, because it's the best. Um, no, but like yeah, yeah, all the other things I like, they're, it's just it's not over the top, ridiculous, goofiness stuff. Wait, it's not, or it is? The stuff that I like isn't. Oh. And and One Piece is, from what I've seen of animes, One Piece is at the top level of being over-the-top goofy. Well, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. That's true. From from what I've seen, I said. Which I and I'm not a big fan of Dragon Ball. And that's why I said Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Fucking Goku slaps Bulma's pussy. Yeah, that one. That's funny. But that's that's not even goofy. That's funny. That is that is he is so naively and curious about that, and that's that's funny. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I really at this. I, I really just I don't know what to tell you. At this point, the arcs start getting a lot longer. And um, if you're not invested, that those long arcs aren't really going to sit well with you. So, like, literally, like... I still think you should try at least to get to Alabasta. Yeah. Through Alabasta. I mean, I'm going to keep watching a little bit of it. But do the... Do Alabasta the giant... is the end of, like, the first saga. Right. Yeah. Do Do the giants, though, this is a spoiler, you can tell me, do the giants end up just making up? Does like Luffy or whatever convince them that they're fighting for stupid reasons and they make up? I will tell you this. First of all, Luffy, Usopp, Zoro, and Sanji, they are men. They will never say that those two giants are fighting for a stupid reason. Okay. They are fighting and they are proud of it. Okay. So do they stop fighting? I will say this much. They do. It is not because of Luffy and the crew. Okay. It happens much, much longer after that. Oh, yeah. so we see them and, again. It probably and I happens do not know somewhere why in the time they skip. Stop. Okay. I do not know why they end up stop fighting each other and they go home. I do okay. not know why they do it. Because it's been do. a conversation. Well, my guess is that they finally found them because after uh, Kashi and 
um, whatever. Oimu, yeah. After Usopp tells right. them that they're fighting there, they probably, probably tell the rest it. of the pirate, the giant pirates, and they go and find them. Yeah, because mm-hmm. in in the show they've talked about it. They've talked about that. It's stupid that they're fighting. They don't even know why they're fighting. It's stupid. Like, why are they doing it? So there's a conversation that's had yeah. inside the show. So that's why I was wondering. Well, they, they they find out. They remember why they're fighting and everything like that. Because basically, Zoro and Sanji are fighting about the same exact thing right now. Just the, They're just trying to compete against each other. Yeah, about who brings home the largest food. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically what they're doing, okay. too. Yeah. In fact, like once you find it out, uh, I'm going to spoil this because they haven't talked about it yet. Once they find out, like they zoom out. And you find out like they're on this, they're, they're just, like giant skeletons All right. that they're living in. Like that, those are their kills from like a hundred years ago. Okay. Cool. Speaking of that, the One Piece should be coming out here relatively soon. I'm excited for that to rewatch it all again. And should I just start with that? Should I go to that? You probably Honestly, should, yes. You probably should have started with that. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as it comes out, I would just switch to it. You know, you're gonna, filler, you're gonna, all the shit. stuff that he's talking about, like you should at least get to Alabasta, like that's gonna happen in 26 episodes. <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe 50. I think East Blue is just 26. Because when is Alabasta? Then well, you have to remember right how one, long it's like just Drum you're Island in the middle is. of it right now. Actually, you started it already. It's technically called the Baroque Works. At, Arc. Well, I know what the Baroque Baroque is, but like, yeah. but getting to Alabasta, it's you. You have one more island after Little Garden, and so like seventy eight episodes worth. Like that's what I'm. I'm asking you because it's flipping anime. So there's only be, one. I there's be, only one in be- Drum Island. That's next. it. That's next. Yeah, and then they go right to Alabasta after Drum Island. Yeah. Oh, Who okay. knows more about One Piece? I mean, we both that know depends. our separate things. Okay. All right. We both know our separate things. Um. Yeah, it's mainly because like we both enjoy it for similar reasons, but we also enjoy it for different reasons too, and we enjoy different characters, so we get ourselves involved in other things and everything like that. Like my my favorite character is not the same character that his favorite character. Who's is. your favorite character? Well, then you just, haven't met them yet. Who's your favorite character? That just means that you're a terrible person, Russ. Why? Why? Well, because Bond Clay is obviously the best. <laughs> so then, but okay, let me ask you then. <laughs> okay, my bad. Out I, of, I changed my answer. My second favorite character is not the same as his second favorite character. Okay. So then, out of the Straw Hat Pirates. So you pirates, just talk about the Straw Hats then? That's what I'm asking right now. Well, out that's of, kind of what I thought. Out okay. of the Straw Hat. Them yet. Out of the Straw Hat Pirates that exist right now. Yeah. Who's your favorite? I guess I would say the same as him then. It's Zoro. Okay. Because that's who I would say too. Zoro is the best Zorro. one. On the current crew that you know of. Okay, I would say Zoro as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. My uh, my favorite crew member has not joined yet. Yeah, I mean, you've already seen one of his most badass moments too. Whiskey Peak. Yeah. Mm. Zoro versus 100 men. Okay. That was dope. Mm-hmm. Just picks up that big ass woman by the fucking mouth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was when everyone got drunk and he didn't. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, okay. no, he was drunk. Yeah. Oh, was it he? just didn't matter. Oh, he, he just woke up. Yeah. It yeah, just didn't matter. That's you'll... one of the things that I had written down here. Nami which... wasn't drunk. Nami was secretly not drunk. But this is one of the things. But that's one of the things I have written down here. And I, I yeah. wanted to ask because I, I know yeah. I talked to you about this off camera. But what bothered me about it, and I want to know if this is the same in Japanese. Did they tell them in Japanese that it was non-alcoholic booze? No. No, because in the English, censorship thing. In English, they say because the thing is, is that she didn't want to drink. I actually, yeah. And then, I, and then they're like, "Oh, don't worry, it's all non-alcoholic. It's our own special blend. There's no alcohol in it, but it has like twice the flavor." And so she drinks it, and she's like, "This is amazing." But then they get into a drinking competition to see who could drink more before they pass out drunk, which makes no sense because yeah. it's non-alcoholic. Oh, so does Sanji have a lollipop? No, no, he's he's that smokes. that, no, that he wasn't smokes. banned at that point. Yeah, no, uh, no, no, no. I don't remember when that ban happened, but yeah. So yeah, so I'm sitting here like this. This this entire thing makes no sense. Yeah, but yeah no. I even saw no. There's alcohol. I even saw a clip of uh, the English uh, in the Yaya Yaya Jaya arc, whatever. Uh, the you remember the drunk guy that's looking at Luffy's bounty poster, mm-hmm. and they he goes to the guy and tells him that Luffy's bounty is this high. Yeah, they 
made it so that he wasn't drunk in the English one for that too. Yeah. I thought that was super weird. It's mm -hmm. like he's clearly falling over drunk. There's there's a lot of weird censorships. And he was like, Oh, I gotta get my eyes checked. I was like, What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's that's just weird American censorship. Okay, and then my other thing for it, we're in the same saga, the stupid guy with guns in his hair. What's his name? Me, 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 me. Oh. So that's what he does. So he, so what does he do in Japanese when he's that, clearing his throat? He goes. That's, that's what he does. He goes me 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 me. Yeah. Yes. Goes, okay. <coughs> me 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 me. Okay. Because, because, la, la, la. Okay. Yeah, so, but sings. that's what he because in in English, he goes <coughs> ma ma. No. Yeah, it's kind of like that. And that's that's all he does. And he does and I'm like this is the this is literally the dumbest thing I've watched. Yeah. Like this is stupid and that yeah. kind of stuff really turns me off yeah, to the show. It's funny. So that type of stuff really I just don't enjoy. It's just it's dumb. It's not funny and the fact that they do it every 13 seconds is just ridiculous to me. Wait, so you've already met that guy. Okay, yeah, yeah. never mind. Hold on. Never mind. Never mind. So yeah, so that's and that's some of the stuff that makes me not like the show. That that type of humor do you have anything else to talk about for this episode um like was one piece not good enough for you well i mean i figure we're done talking about one. i have no more things i just deleted everything off my list about one piece so i have no more to talk about yeah just no i guess no i don't really have it much else how long are we going for You're probably like an one hour. Long enough. 12 yeah okay long enough so yeah all right, go um, take care of your dogs. Yeah, then we can figure things out. All right, well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Two Rights Make a Wrong. You guys know what to um, do. I've Hit been those buttons. I've been Daniel. All the buttons. That's been Russell. Uh, I was. Subscribe. 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 Hit the bell. Subscribe. Uh, last episode, full list of comment. episodes. Comment for us, please. Comment uh, for algorithm. Even just Channel. literally type that in right there. Here. Type, type, type. Uh, comment for algorithm. Okay, comment your long. favorite One no. Piece character. Bye. Okay, I gotta point at things again because he went too long. No, you don't have to last point at episode, anything. People fucking know what this shit is. It's we're list not. Of episodes, we're not. We're not gearing us to the first person that's ever been on YouTube. You know what to do already. Hit your fucking buttons. I'm not sure if we're allowed to play the last like three minutes because of how many F words you said, but <laughs> the next episode we should bring the dogs in the episode. Instead of you guys, just have it be the dogs.